and welcome to I24 News Sports Weekend Edition with some of the big stories from the week that is ending. It was a week in which Barcelona sealed its dominance of European football. After securing the Spanish Championship and Cup, the team from Catalonia came to Berlin to take the biggest prize of them all, the prestigious Champions League. It was not easy, but Messi and company came out as the winners against Italian champions Juventus. And then it was time for celebrations. Michael Friedman with a story. It was the perfect end to a remarkable season. After claiming the Spanish League title and the Copa del Rey, the Catalan Giants arrived in Berlin with only one aim, to win the treble. And that's exactly what they did. The Barca faithfuls came to Germany in support of their beloved club, bringing drums and showing off their team's colors on the streets. Although Juventus put up a fight, Barcelona proved to be too strong, and goals by Rakitic, Suarez, and Neymar were enough to win the final 3-1. The Barca manager was especially happy with his club and believes they are in a league of their own. We have nourished ourselves with trophies and titles over the last 10 years. Without a doubt, the best club in Europe is Barcelona. We can see this with the way we've won these trophies and these titles. We want to keep going along this road. These players have shown in all manner, shape and form that they have a hunger for victories. And I think the key is they enjoy what they do so much and they have the possibility of making their supporters so happy. Despite the valiant efforts by the Italian club, the Juve manager felt Barca was just too good to beat. Tonight we had the chance of preventing Barcelona from winning the treble. But they were extraordinary and we were not able to contain them. As expected, after the match, all the fans back home were partying all night. Thousands of Barca fans took to Los Ramblas Boulevard to celebrate their incredible fifth Champions League title. But the party didn't stop there. The team returned home to a huge parade where all the supporters came out for the festivities. And the fans were ecstatic to see their club make history once again. It is impressive. What Barca did this season is beyond description. As a Barca supporter, I feel very proud of the players. And what better place to finish the parade than at the Barca Cathedral at Camp Nou in front of 98,000 supporters. This was a very special occasion for the legendary Xavi, who played his last game for the club. Thanks a lot to Luis Enrique, to the technical staff and to the whole team for giving me such a wonderful season so I can leave with happiness. Thank you very much to all of you. I will miss you a lot. The fans were able to witness true brilliance this season by the whole team, but especially by the Messi, Suarez, Neymar trio, who combined for an astonishing total of 122 goals. And much of the credit is due to the remarkable Leo Messi. It is incredible being here to celebrate this again. Following last year, which was a very difficult and hard year for me. It is spectacular to be here tonight. We must really enjoy this moment. The club finished the season with a treble, same as in 2009, and they are the first club to ever do it twice. Enrique proved to be the right man for the job, and the players provided excellence throughout the season. This may very well be the start to a new reign of dominance for Barcelona. Today, the players of Barcelona are major stars, worldwide heroes, but just like every other player, the road began when they were young and had to make sure they do not only show their talent, but also keep away from other distractions. It's the same story for Benny, a young goalkeeper for Israeli team Beitar Jerusalem. He always stood up as a great goalkeeper, but discipline issues kept him out of school and put his career in jeopardy. That's when his coach intervened and things finally changed. Michael Friedman, along with the social platform Two Stories 365, brings us the story of the goalkeeper who does not miss school anymore. He's even one of the best students in class. Football has always been a powerful tool for youth around the world. The sport teaches responsibility, character, discipline, and can change the life of anyone. Here in Israel, Benny Peretz grew up playing football in the Beitar Yerushalayim Youth Academy from a young age. As with many other children, football helped Benny be more focused and gave him a better outlook on and off the pitch. He began playing football as an outfield player, but as he grew up, he also had to deal with the difficulties of asthma. Because he loved to play the game, his coach decided to put him in goal where he learned to excel. 
But throughout the years, Benny found himself facing an even bigger problem, problems at school. Like many kids, Benny doesn't enjoy going to school or sitting in the classroom. He was constantly in trouble with his teachers, but the one key to help him was the passion for the game. With guidance and support by his side, the love of football became his motivation to learn every day. I moved to a lot of schools and had many problems getting suspended again and again. Football gave me discipline and stopped me from making trouble in school. Benny showed off his skills on the pitch where his Beitar Yerushalayim team plays. Diving for the ball and making big saves is what he lives for. And Benny is certainly a force in front of the net. Despite his success on the field, he could have gone the wrong way, but there was someone there to make sure it didn't happen. My coach Avi has been with me since I was eight, and even when I had hard times in school, he was there for me. One day he told me that school is important for me and I have to do it. He is the man I respect the most at the club, and thanks to him, I do better in school. Benny's coach has become extremely important both on and off the field. While his focus during training was to teach him the values of the game, he also made sure to enhance the goalkeeper's life outside of football. Benny came here as a small kid. At the beginning he was physically small and we had doubts about him. And as he grew we had problems in school. Sometimes he didn't wake up for class or go to school. His mom and the school contacted us at the Beitar Academy and we put him in a program, made sure he goes to school and goes to Beitar both being dependent on each other. We knew from the beginning he was very talented and there were bigger goalkeepers, but he outperformed them all. Benny's coach and everyone around him have seen huge growth and believes he is moving in the right direction. With a more positive attitude in the classroom, the goalkeeper has a bright future ahead and maybe one day we will see Benny playing professionally. If he does, he will know it is not only his talent on the pitch that got him there, but also his coach's persistence to make sure he stays in school. And Michael, you're here with us. Thank you for coming. Uh, you, you spent the day with him. It seems that Benny at a certain point understood if you want to succeed in football, it's not only the training pitch, it's school. It's that important. Absolutely. It was a fantastic day watching him on the pitch, speaking with him. This is a great kid who's really took the sport and it's made him into a better person. Uh, and obviously had a lot of support on his side. In any sport, discipline is an incredibly crucial part of the game, and you need to you need to be able to use this uh, in your life. So Benny Benny was able to emerge from from all the tough times, getting suspended through the years, and get his life together and be a phenomenal phenomenal guy. And now the question is, you think uh, his career can now he's he's coming he's coming to age where he can go pro? You think it's possible he has, he has the ability? This is the time. Obviously, we all know making it professionally is a very challenging thing in any sport, uh, but he, he's a very determined individual. He's working hard, he's playing hard, and uh, we're all hoping for him. And his coach also said it's very possible for him to make it into the next uh, you know, league. Yeah, we heard, we heard his coach say uh, he's an outstanding goalkeeper, maybe um, can make it. Very encouraging story indeed. Michael Friedman, thank you very much. Thank you. We started the show by talking about Barcelona. They were the big winners of the week, but certainly not the only ones. There were also other big stars shining in the world of tennis, Formula One, and there was also a very special horse who accomplished a major achievement, which, which was not done for nearly 40 years. This was another week featuring top performances around the world. Tennis stars Stan Wawrinka and Serena Williams, Formula One driver Lewis Hamilton, and the super fast horse American Pharaoh all claimed trophies in their respective sports. So pick your favorite star of the week. We begin with the Men's French Open where Stan Wawrinka battled Novak Djokovic in the finals. Despite going down in the first set, the Swiss player showed perseverance and strength to upset the world number one. Wawrinka served for match point and beat the Serbian with a brilliant backhand down the line to win the French Open. The two players joined at the net and hugged at the end of what was a fantastic match. This was a special win for Wawrinka as he collected his second major title after winning the Australian Open last year. Staying with tennis, we moved to the women's final where Serena Williams battled Lucy Safarova of the Czech Republic. While Serena finished the first set 6-3, Safarova was relentless and came back to take the second 7-6. 
But as we all know, when it comes to determination, the American is fierce and mighty. Williams finished the match winning the third and decisive set, 6-2, to take another impressive title in Roland Garros. The American champion was ecstatic that she lifted her 20th Grand Slam trophy. Next, we move to Formula One, where the world champion Lewis Hamilton came into Canada focused and ready to reassert his dominance in the sport. On a quest to win his second successive world championship, he drove around the circuit Gilles Villeneuve on Montreal's Isle Notre Dame, where he earned his first Grand Prix win in 2007. The Mercedes driver took the checkered flag with speed to win his fourth Canadian Grand Prix. They're off in the Belmont Stakes. Well, the next one is not exactly an athlete, but still deserves a lot of praise after claiming a historic triple crown by winning the Belmont Stakes. After previously winning the Kentucky Derby and Preakness Stakes earlier this year, American Pharoah captured the triple crown, which has not been done since 1978. American Pharoah, ridden by Victor Espinosa, soared to victory in front of 90,000 fans. Of the four stellar champions, Walrinka claimed the French Open. Serena Williams lifted her 20th Grand Slam trophy. Lewis Hamilton won the Grand Prix in Canada, and American Farrow won the 147th running of the Belmont Stakes. It's now time for you to choose your favorite star of the week. And now it's time to look at the incredibly exciting NBA Finals. With me here to do it is our NBA analyst, Danny Swibel. Hi, Danny. How you doing today? Fine, thank you. First thing I want to ask you, when do you ever get some sleep? There's NBA Finals. You're a Chicago Blackhawks fan, so NHL Finals as well. Every other night, 4 a.m. in the morning, our time. Do you ever sleep? It's been extremely <laughs> stuffed, but aren't you entertained? I this am entertained. This has been juicy. As we talked about, it is juicy beyond belief. Oh, yes. We've seen some historic stuff here. And, and if someone makes it juicy, is LeBron James. You may like him, you may not like him. You cannot disrespect what the guy is doing. It's amazing. He's taken the team by himself, maybe to the championship. It's not far. It's ridiculous. I mean, he's averaging a triple-double almost every night. 41 points, that's up there with Michael Jordan in the 1993 season. Any haters out there of LeBron, which I can be sometimes, you know, are definitely put to doubt because this guy's putting the team on his shoulders. I still don't know what Steve Kerr is doing not double teaming LeBron James because he's the best basketball player in the world right now, possibly one of the best of all times. So what is Steve Kerr thinking? I don't know. And, and what a series this has been. I mean, uh, there's, uh, there's LeBron, but there's also comebacks and, and two overtimes in the first two games. We have not seen that this series, I, I don't know how it's going to end, but it's developing as one of the best ever. I mean, yeah, every game has been so, all these games have been so close. Yeah, game one, game two, both of those going into overtime. That set a record. It's never been done. Obviously amazing. And we were at first worried of who was going to be in the finals, if they were going to get the ratings, if it was like Atlanta. But Cleveland and Golden State has had more numbers in the last maybe 15 years, they say. So people are definitely tuning in. And yeah, it's just been juicy. Those first two games back and forth the entire game. And then, uh, you know, the game three, even though, you know, Cleveland was just dominating all game. Golden State made this comeback, so I they, mean, they were down one point at a certain stage late in the game. In the end, Cleveland laid it on thick, and this guy, Della Vadova, he, obviously LeBron is the player of the series, but this guy, Della Vadova, the scrappiness, the intensity, not only is he doing it on the defensive end, but he's then doing it offensively. He's doing what Steph Curry should be doing. That three-point play, when, when the, the Warriors yeah. go back to one. Yeah, well, it was that three-point play, and then a few plays after that, when he was practically being held and almost tackled by Steph Curry, he still manages to get the shot up Somehow, and the foul. when the ball's on the ground, De La is the first guy to it. It's amazing. See, that's what finals play should all be about. Just diving for everything. Every bucket matters. As we've seen, just every bucket matters. I think at the end of game three, um, there was an open uh, slam dunk that was missed by Golden State, and that ends up, you know, costing them perhaps the game by just missing one shot like that. Everything matters in the playoffs like now, this. Now, we don't know what Steph Curry will do from now on, but he was absent for nearly two games, game two and almost the entire game three, which Warriors lost. Even if he gets back, isn't it perhaps too late? You know, just like how he was, I feel, in game three, maybe too little too late. Where is this guy's leadership? I know this is the first time he's been in the finals, and maybe that's his demeanor to be a little stoic, but the thing is your team needs you. You are the MVP of the league. You got to get that 
passion, that intensity back. Because, you know, this late comeback that he, they tried to do in Game 3, it was too little, too late. So you got to put the team on your shoulders. I know in playoff times it's hard to hit those buckets like he was doing so easily all season. But get these things. Drive in there. Get layups. Do something. Uh, be a facilitator. Get some assists. But do something. Because right now you don't want the series to slip away. Now you still have a lot of chance to do something. You know, they're, they have, they're going to try to keep the home court advantage or get it back. They can do this, but they have to start playing. Is this a series that can go to game six, perhaps game seven? I like to think it can. You know, there has to be an answer for LeBron James. Make I, Steve Kerr should really try to put this pressure on LeBron James and make other people in Cleveland score who really haven't stepped up in the series, like J.R. Smith, Schumpert, make them have to win the series in the game for you. But the thing is, if you're just going to let LeBron do what he's doing game in, game out, it's not going it. to be pretty for Golden State. What a series. Danny Swybell, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And that's it for this weekend edition. Don't forget you can watch this and every other show on our website at i24news.tv. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend.